Hello out there. This is, uh, well, it's 1.35. This is my first audit ever. And I'm at the uh, City of Orange Police Department. This is the back of the department, Batavia and Hoover. So this long street here is uh, Batavia. This looks like it's one entry gate to the police department. From that vantage point, and notice I'm on walking on the sidewalk. You can only see a few cars. I haven't seen anyone coming or going. Um, and what's the reason? Uh, let me give this guy some privacy here. Okay. Um, so this is in the city of Orange, city of Orange Police Department, corner of. Struck and Batavia, and uh, some might wonder why in the world am I doing this? Well, the time to stand, that, that's the guy on YouTube, I was watching YouTube, and uh, a channel by the name of Time to Stand came out and uh, was treated very poorly by the Orange Police Department. and. Uh, the guy has guts, he comes back a few weeks later to the exact same spot and uh, they still don't treat him right but a little bit better and then I got this idea of the PD, I'll call it the PD Audit Challenge, the PD Audit Challenge and if you guys can think of a better name that would be great and so basically what I'm saying is that we just keep coming back to this spot and to the police get it in their heads that they cannot uh, harass a person who's doing a legal activity standing on a on a sidewalk where they're legally able to stand and film anything that is in plain view the police have cameras that they use when they're out in public filming everything in public and so we as just normal people can uh, film whatever is in plain view and when they stop harassing us, giving us a hard time for exercising our rights, then we stop. But my challenge is that we, my challenge is that we keep coming back to this spot until, until the police interact with us more appropriately. One way would just be to ignore us. Another thing to do would just say hello, acknowledge that we're exercising our rights, ask us if we need anything and be on their way. Another thing they could possibly do is just sit out in a squad car, waste taxpayers money and sit on some corner looking at us because all those are legal activities. However, stopping us claiming that uh, it's suspicious activity, it may be suspicious, but it's legal activity. I want to give the woman a little bit of privacy there. She might not have wanted to be in camera, and she's not a public servant, <laughs> and I just want to be polite with her. Um, yes. So now I'm on Parker and Struck, and this is the back parking lot of the police department. So we're getting close. We're getting close to where the... Uh, the crime took place where Mr. Time to Stand had his rights violated. And uh, my memory serves me correctly. He was stopped here and told to sit down here for legal activities. So that's the gate coming in and out. And I was really surprised, but back, at, this is a, a dead end, a cul-de-sac, and at the end of the cul-de-sac, um, there are a bunch of homeless people living there. So if any of you guys want to come by and maybe give them some food and blankets, I'm sure they would appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to stand here, and I'll turn the camera back on when, uh, when the police show up. So I've been here, let's see, six minutes, and they still haven't shown up. All right, we'll see what happens.
ladies and gentlemen, I've been here for about 45 minutes now. The police have not come out and it's starting to rain so I think I'm going to pack up my bags and get going here. Uh, there was a round one where Time to Send came out and he was thoroughly harassed for exercising his First Amendment right. Only two days ago from today, he went to round two, came back, still harassed, given a hard time of his rights were violated. However, if I can call this a round three, which was only two days after round two, well, let's see, a rolling stop? Is that a rolling stop? I don't know, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Um, so that was round three, today's round three. I've films, multiple police officers, they've had ample opportunity to come out and challenge me, which they haven't, leading me to suspect that they have learned from uh, the first two encounters with Time to Stand, proving that he has made a difference. Perhaps they've had a change in policies, um, but they are not challenging me. So, in review, a police officer can just say, hey you, I want to talk to you. And even though you think he's acting as a police officer, it's just as if you and I were to say, if I were to walk up to a person and ask him what time it is. It's just a consensual encounter. That is level one. Level two is the police officer can articulate that he believes a crime has taken place and can articulate why he believes you've committed that crime. Um, he has to give facts. It cannot be a hunch or suspicion. Um, he has to be able to articulate what facts he believes uh, I swear to God, it looked like a five. Right. More than a five, I was easily distracted. So, level two reasonable suspicion that a crime has taken place and that you have uh, committed that crime, and he can articulate uh, specific facts uh, why he believes you committed that crime. He can detain you. Uh, during that detention, he can get the, uh, your identification. The third level, the highest level, is probable cause, and that is where the cop actually witnesses you committing a crime. Or uh, when, when there is probable cause, he can then arrest you at that point. He or she can arrest you at that point. So, all right, another victory.